Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome. Uh, very glad to be here and uh, very pleased that you could all join us. I'm Nancy Sutley, I'm chair of the White House Council on Environmental Quality, and it's my great pleasure to be joined in today's announcement by the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Energy, Steve Chu, in front of whose building we are, the Administrator of the United States General Services Administration, Martha Johnson, and uh, Brian Wynn, President of the Electric Drive Transportation Association. Uh, the President Obama has laid out a plan to win the future and compete for the jobs and industries of our age by out-innovating, out-educating, and out-building the rest of the world. And we know we can't, win, we can't win the future without winning the race for clean energy. And by investing in the creativity and imagination of our people, we can secure our nation's clean energy future. And the President has directed the federal government to lead by example towards these goals by deploying smart and sustainable management practices that save the taxpayers money and support the kind of innovative technologies that will ensure that the United States continues to lead in the 21st century world economy. President Obama's 2009 executive order on federal leadership in environmental energy and economic performance charged federal agencies with meeting energy, water, pollution, and waste reduction targets including on, calling on federal agencies to make significant reductions in their petroleum use. And we know that one of the best ways to reduce our dependence on oil is by making our cars and trucks more efficient because transportation accounts for more than 70 percent of America's oil consumption. The federal government operates the largest fleet in the country, setting measurable fuel reduction targets and measuring our progress towards meeting these targets keeps us on track to save money and to make sure that the federal government is participating in this new economy, but also driving us towards America's clean energy future. Fuel efficient cars and trucks also make economic sense because transportation is one of the biggest costs for many businesses and certainly for many families. Investing in fuel efficient vehicles will cut our dependence on oil, reduce harmful pollution, and save us money day to day. The federal government is leading by example by boosting clean energy technologies in our federal fleet. In fact, to date, we've already doubled the number of hybrid cars and trucks in the federal fleet, saving an estimated 7.7 .7 million gallons of gasoline through increased fuel efficiency. And today, the president is directing agencies to go even further in demonstrating the best in energy, energy efficient and in, innovative vehicle technology. President Obama issued a presidential memorandum that will further the administration's goals to cut oil imports and to put more alternative fuel vehicles on the road. This memorandum directs new government-wide fleet management practices to ensure that we are achieving the president's goals for fuel efficiency and innovative technology. It directs agencies to develop practices that will move the federal government to only purchase alternative fuel passenger vehicles and light duty trucks by 2015. That is, 100% of new vehicle purchases by 2015 must be alternative fuel passenger vehicles and light duty trucks. Also, to develop and implement methodologies for agencies to determine their agency's optimal fleet size and provide agencies with recommendations for alternative fuel vehicle purchase and fleet optimization, and establish a goal for the size and composition of the federal fleet and a plan to achieve this target by 2015. Today, we take another major step towards becoming the country that leads the world in clean energy and we'll keep more moving forward to realize our potential and secure a healthy and prosperous future for the United States. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and my colleague, U.S. General Services Administrator Martha Johnson, who will announce the first, this historic first step in putting the President's plan into action. Martha. Thank you for that generous introduction. I'm honored to join Chair Sutley and Secretary Chu as we celebrate today's purchase of the government's first 116 electric vehicles. These cars will go to 20 agencies, including the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense, both of which are represented here today, 
in five cities across the country. I'm also delighted to be here because I began my career uh, working in a diesel engine uh, manufacturing plant, and I've been part of the automotive industry uh, at times across my career, and it is a terrific thing to see the development and evolution of that industry firsthand. It's exciting to be here to recognize the next chapter uh, in that industry story. At GSA, our mission is to provide an effective, sustainable, and transparent government for the American people. We support agencies so that they can support our great nation. As part of that mission, we design and maintain federal buildings across the country, and we help manage the acquisition of goods and services for the federal government, including the procurement of nearly 400,000 vehicles used by federal agencies. This puts us in a unique strategic position to help the government invest in advanced technology vehicles. Already, GSA has made serious progress in integrating more fuel-efficient vehicles into the federal fleet. In the past year alone, we have doubled the number of hybrid vehicles across the government, re replacing old cars with new fuel-efficient ones. These purchases have already led a 25% increase led to a 25% increase in the fuel efficiency of the fleet, saving taxpayers $9 million last year. The electric vehicle program we launched today is the next big step. It furthers the administration's goal of putting 1 million advanced vehicles on the road by 2015, and it represents a significant targeted investment in the next generation of, of automotive technology. Importantly, GSA is approaching this program in a strategic and coordinated way, leveraging our expertise across our enterprise in both real estate and acquisition to deliver the best value to agencies and to the taxpayer. On our acquisition side, we have issued three contracts for electric vehicle purchases, and GSA is purchasing 116 vehicles off those contracts to lease to the 20 agencies across government. These first vehicles are expected to save over 29,000 gallons of gas, reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 260 tons, and save taxpayers over $109,000 every period, single period, year period. And since agencies can now use those contracts to purchase more vehicles, we anticipate even greater savings for federal agencies and even better value for the American people. But we aren't stopping there. To power these new vehicles, GSA is leveraging its role as the leading federal real estate manager and is installing electric vehicle charging stations at federal buildings in five cities across the country. The ripple effect of this is deliberate and coordinated investment, and it is vast and stretches across industries and markets. By laying the foundation for federal EV infrastructure, GSA is supporting both the electric vehicle industry as well as other associated industries such as advanced battery research and recycling. And this in turn supports American innovation. Two months ago, I was able to tour a facility in Lancaster, Ohio, where, thanks to the Department of Energy grant, a company called Toxco is developing one of the first electric vehicle battery recycling centers in the country. This company exemplifies the kind of leading edge thinking that we are eager to support, and today's investment does exactly that. It broadens the electric vehicle market, which in turn will increase the production of battery research and production. More batteries on the road will mean that more batteries will need to be recycled, and that translates into real business for firms like Toxco. Finally, and at an even broader level, our purchases will help build the technolo technological framework required to support electric vehicle integration ac across the country and throughout the economy. The federal purchase of these vehicles and the accompanying plug-in infrastructure is exciting and broadens our investment in advanced technology vehicles. It is certain to deliver value to federal agencies boost a vital new industry, spur competitive innovation, and bring solid savings to the taxpayer. In a few minutes, I am going to be handing these keys over to Secretary Chu for one of the vehicles here. This is the first of many sets of keys 
that will be delivered to the Department of Energy and other agencies that will help save millions of dollars and set a course for a sustainable federal fleet. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you, uh, Administrator Johnson, and, and thank you uh, for GSA's efforts. Uh, these alternative fuel vehicle purchases will really allow us to build the next generation of vehicles and ensure that we're promoting the partnership between business and government that has always made our economy strong. It's now my pleasure to introduce our host today, uh, our great Secretary of Energy, Steve Chu. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Administrator Johnson, uh, for your leadership and for the partnership in moving the federal government towards clean energy. Uh, we are in a global race to capture the growing market for alternative vehicle technologies. Uh, many other countries around the world recognize that in the coming years and decades, electric vehicles will become a major part of our transportation infrastructure. And uh, we want to make sure the United States is poised to capture that leadership. Uh, instead of spending a billion dollars a day to import oil, we need to invest in American innovation that will help put the U.S. back in control of our energy future. And as the, largest nation, as the nation's largest fleet vehicle operator, the federal government can have a big impact. And so we have an important role to play in reducing America's dependence on foreign oil and moving to a clean energy future. And as been noted, we need to lead by example. So the steps announced today will help transition our nation's vehicle fleet towards alternative vehicle technologies such as electric vehicles, uh, plug-in hybrids, and biofuels. And this builds on an effort already underway to reduce fuel use in federal fleets. For instance, as part of a three-year strategy to reduce petroleum use in the Department of Energy, uh, we've replaced more than 750 of our vehicles with hybrids last year. Already, more than 75% of our headquarters fleet are alternative fuel vehicles. And we will be reducing our fleet inventory by 35% over the next three years. That's within the Department of Energy. Under the GSA pilot project, we'll take ownership of 14 new electric vehicles. We'll expand our charging infrastructure here at the Department of Energy by installing new electric vehicle charging stations. But it's not just the federal government leading the way. We're joined here by some of our national fleet partners, UPS, Verizon, and AT&T. These private sector leaders demonstrate that moving to alternative vehicles makes economic sense. Together, we can help meet Ob President Obama's bold but achievable vehicle goals. We can become the first country to put one million electric vehicles on the road by 2015, and we can reduce America's oil imports by one-third by 2025. So we look forward to continuing our work with our federal and private sector partners to ensure that America is the leader in development, production, and use of alternative vehicles for decades to come. So thank you. And Nancy? Thank you, Secretary Chu. And uh, thank you for all the efforts uh, by the Department of Energy. The Clean Fleets Partnership that you mentioned is another great program that's uh, helping in our efforts to promote fuel efficiency standards and build a clean energy economy. And, and now I'm happy to introduce uh, one of our private sector partners and a great leader in this uh, race to clean energy for the nation, the president of the Electric Drive Transportation Association, Brian Wynn. Thank you, Chair Sutley, Administrator Johnson. Secretary Chu, it's a pleasure to be back here at the Department of Energy with you, sir. Last time it was raining. I'm glad the weather is, is a little bit better. I'm happy to be here at this event uh, demonstrating the exciting opportunities electric drive vehicles present to fleets and to the nation. The Electric Drive Transportation Association members are building the electric drive vehicles and infrastructure that will transform the fleet. And we're proud of the administration's bold vision for electric drive and the vital work being done across the government to realize it. GSA is not only purchasing more than 100 plug-in vehicles, it is establishing a framework for plug-in vehicles and infrastructure across the government. Their efforts are complemented by the Department of Energy, which is leading the federal research and development effort 
advancing U.S. manufacturing and deploying electric drive vehicles through the Clean Cities program. Electric drive vehicles like those behind us will help federal fleets reduce their oil consumption, which will save taxpayer dollars and reduce air emissions. Electrifying the fleet will also help to accelerate the private sector market by helping manufacturers reach economies of scale that will bring the cost down and move more plug-in vehicles and infrastructure into the market. The federal commitment to advance vehicle purchases and to integrating plug-in vehicles and infrastructure into the federal fleet sends a critical signal to industry. It will reinforce the private investments that are being made and grow the advanced technology workforce, which will help the U.S. lead in the global marketplace for advanced electric drive vehicles and infrastructure. The exciting array of vehicles behind us illustrates another important point about electric drive. From deliveries large and small to personal transport, from battery EVs to hybrids to fuel cells, electric drive options to meet the, meet the diverse needs of the federal fleet as well as consumers and businesses. And while they are on their appointed rounds, these vehicles will also be helping to meet our critical national need for alternatives to oil and establishing our leadership in the energy technology marketplace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. And before we uh, go and check out some of the uh, vehicles behind us, uh, Martha, I think you have something uh, to present. Uh, with that, we invite our, some of our uh, industry representatives uh, to come join us as we take a look at some of the vehicles behind us. Thank you.